Good morning, Picks Wise Nation. It's only a good morning because we woke up. I mean, what a day yesterday, Jared. I mean, just two crazy games, two crazy outcomes. Just, I mean, you're on the right side, and then you're on the right side for one second, and then you're just on the complete opposite side after like one play. I mean, just, I mean, it's why sports are great, right? I mean, what what a day. What a day. It was a fun day, and and I know um, you know sometimes we define the word fun or successful as how many units you're up, um, but I think sometimes you just have to appreciate how crazy this league is, and I think the betting aspect of it is very difficult. I, I think anyone who is out there and we see the takes on on gambling Twitter all the time, no one's ever wrong on Twitter, um, but I, I think we just have to sometimes take a step back from wow, I lost this bet and be like, wow, that game was really crazy. I mean, we had two games yesterday, both one seeds coming off the bye looked like absolute dog track. I mean, just awful. Like, you know, the Packers in the second half were awful. The Titans in the first half, first throw of the game for Tannehill, first throw of the second half, last throw of the game, both one seeds off the bye, losing at the buzzer with field goals from the, from the road teams. I, I mean, just, you know, tip your cap to both the Bengals and the Niners, McPherson is a legend now in Cincinnati. He'll never pay for a drink ever again in that city. And, it, like, the, the results were entertaining. Like, those games were entertaining. I know we look at it through the prism of our bet. But the games were really entertaining. Um, and I hope we get two more good ones today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I apologize to – listen, I was really high on Alan Lazard. I, I couldn't have felt better about Alan Lazard. I felt really good because I was like, oh, I can't just throw to Devontae Adams all day. And then what happens? Aaron, Aaron Rodgers watched the show and was like, hey, I'm gonna, I can throw to Devontae Adams all day. <laughs> like, actually, I can throw to Devontae Adams all day. That's what I'm going to say. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to – that's my that's my take. Aaron Rodgers watched this pregame and said, yeah. you know what? I'm going to prove Alex Glaze wrong. Stranger things have Adams happened. I mean, you know, I mean, you, you just never know with, with, with him. There were a lot of jokes about um, the Rogers situation and the fact that, you know, he was showing course. everyone his COVID toe earlier in the week, you know, earlier this season. And then it was a foot, uh, Robbie Gold's foot that ended up knocking him out of the play. Like there was just, there was like, there was a joke, like just, so I guess my advice to all gambling Twitter and all the people that watch this show and expect us to come on every day and, and just be impeccable with uh, our picks. This is hard. These games are really hard to predict. I do research. Alex does research. Our team behind the scenes does research all week long. Stats, angles, trends. Once the ball is kicked off, none of it matters. Sharp, square, trends, buys, none of it matters. Joe Burrow was sacked nine times yesterday, and the Titans ran for like almost 200 yards and still lost the game. Aaron Rodgers had a 7-0 lead, driving right down the field, getting ready to go up two scores. The ball gets knocked out of Mercedes Lewis's hands, all heck Blake breaks loose, block field goals, block Game changing play. You can't predict this stuff. It's not predictable. We're going to try to, but people that get mad and upset and, oh, no, I can't believe you didn't get this right. It, it, it's it's laughable to think that uh, anyone else could do better. These games are nuts. They're absolutely bonkers. But I'm excited to bet on them more today. Let's yeah, we're going to talk about the uh, the other two games later on in the show. we got a lot to get to, but before we do, make sure you download the PicksWise app, available on the Apple Store and in Google Play. And, of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out on the show or any PicksWise content. We do the show every day at 10 a.m. Before we get to the other – Divisional round games. We're going to talk some basketball, get into a little NBA. Then we're going to talk about Rams Bucks game. And then we're going to get into the, uh, the Bills Chiefs game, the big one tonight. And then we're going to give out our plays of the day. Uh, so without further ado, Jared, let's get it and let's bet it. Let's start with some college basketball. We got a big one today. Xavier on the road at Marquette. Uh, two of the hottest teams in the Big East. Marquette on a five game win streak. And Xavier looking for their third win in a row. Uh, Marquette, been really good this season. Big wins and uh, covers against uh, against five straight teams, including wins against Providence and Villanova. And I feel like if there's one thing we know about Shaka Smart-led teams, we know they're going to play fast. We know they're going to play tough defense. And I think that's going to be the difference today. I mean, this is a team that held Providence to 56 points early in the month. And Villanova to just 54 points earlier in the week. So when you're looking at this game, what do you see? Yeah, I'll be honest. I, I kind of like Marquette in this spot. I was actually surprised they were a dog. Uh, Shock a smart home dog, right? I looked that up. That's not really a trend this year. He's just two and two uh, straight up and against the spread. But I guess two wins outright as a home dog. That's not bad. But 
Uh, when I look at Xavier, I, I was looking at their box score. I've got it up now from their last game against the Paul, who, by the way, is they're improving, but it's still a very, um, you know, a disjointed DePaul team. And yeah. and they were down at half. Uh, Xavier was. They were down by two at half, and, and they ended up winning the game by one. And they shot 51% from the floor, 42% from three, and still only scored 68 points and won by one. So I, I am a little concerned about Xavier's consistency um, uh, going, you know, back on, on both ends of the floor. And then I look at Marquette, and – they're a top 70 team offensive defensive efficiency. They're top 40 in, in defense. And I think when you're playing at home, the pace matters a little bit more because you're a little more comfortable. So I think the pace will be an issue today for this Xavier team, which is coming off again, that tough game over DePaul where they had to grind a game out and DePaul likes to run and gun a little bit too. So I, I think getting two points with Marquette at home, you want to play the money line. I think that's fine too. I, I, I grabbed the two last night uh, and we'll see if uh, home shock is smart. He looks weird with hair, by the way. Can we talk about that? That's a little strange. He's, he's, like he's had the hair for a little bit. I know, but it bit. still looks a little strange. But that's nothing to do with the outcome of the game. Although these days, who knows? Anything. Can yeah, happen, yeah. Uh, depending on the outcome of the game. But I, I do think uh, Marquette at home. I like players. I like Marquette too, but I also I like them because it seems you know if you just look at them this year, they get up for these kinds of games. You yeah. know, when you look at Villanova and you look at Providence, like those are two of the bigger teams in the Big East. Their defense showed up. I mean, those are probably the best two defensive performances this season. I mean, 54 and 56 points. I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at. So, yeah, uh, definitely they're going to be out for this game. So it should be a good one there. Uh, let's let's get into some NBA real quick um, mm -hmm. because I want to I want to touch on one game that we got tonight. But before we mm -hmm. do that, uh, I want to ask you about the Mavericks quietly, maybe not so quietly, eight and two in their past 10 games, uh, currently fifth in the East at plus 1700 or in the West, excuse me, plus 1700 to win the West. Do you like? Uh, putting maybe a little little flyer on the Mavs in that spot there. Absolutely not. Um, it, not a believer I, in Luca. No, I mean it's Luca's fine. It's the other big man for them that I can't uh, really Porzingis. back. Um, I've had plenty of experience watching Porzingis. I will say this: I was looking at. So I don't have any plays on the NBA tonight, but I, I was looking at a weekly report, and and basically what it does is it just goes through all the games in, in the course of a week, and it kind of shows where the offensive defensive efficiency where the closing totals are what the over under record is what the three point shooting is and it's fascinating to see kind of the ebbs and flows of the totals to me I'm an like if when I do end up betting the NBA in, in inevitably in like a month or two uh totals will be where I kind of lean into and I'm noticing a massive decrease in pace over the last week or so and mm -hmm. a decrease in point scored um, mm -hmm. And a decrease slight decrease in in, in offensive efficiency it kind of started slow and then it peaked. And now we're seeing the offensive efficiency, the totals, and um, the pace kind of slow a little bit. And I think that makes sense. It feels like the dog days of winter in the NBA are kind of upon us. But the Mavericks, speaking of that, they're 9-1 and of the under in their last 10 games. So I think as, as hard as it is, you might be really uh, excited about this, but unders um, during these dog days of winter. Basketball um, unders are Basketball oh. unders are brutal to watch. Oh. <laughs> I mean, really <laughs> tough to watch. But that seems to be the overarching trend where we're starting to see a decrease in pace overall around the league, a decrease in the total points scored overall around the league. Obviously, one game, anything can happen. But big picture, macro trends, we're kind of in the middle part of the year, and it's the dog days of winter. I know it sounds weird, but it's like the opposite of what we see in the uh, baseball world when it's just, you know the July-August month when things really slow down. Um, this is that time for uh, Major League Baseball, or excuse me, for uh, the National Basketball Association that we get those dips. So look to the unders, as sweaty as funny. those may be. Yeah, it's funny you bring that up. I'm I'm not going to play it under for, for this game I'm talking about right now, but you're talking about teams that have gotten better defensively. Look at the Hornets. Mm. Uh, I'm looking at them tonight. I'm going to lay the three points now. I see three and a half at some spots, so that three could be going soon. But they're yeah. uh, hosting the Hawks. And the Hornets, you know, we know about LaMelo Ball. We know about that offense. We know about their the pace that they want to keep. But over the past three games, they've actually turned it up defensively as well, holding opponents to an average of 95.7 points per game, best in the league, and just over 40% field goal percentage. That's also uh, best in the league. And top five in opponent turnovers and top five in extra scoring chances. So the Hornets ha are getting it done on both ends of the floor right now. Tough team. I, I like that Hornets team. I, 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 it's a young exciting. team. It's a fun yeah. team. It's, they're young and fun. 
And they almost remind me kind of they're, they're what the Hawks were, I think, last year. I mean, they were fun. They yeah. were exciting. They had the highlight plays. I mean, they Hawks didn't really have the defense, but I mean, the, the Hornets had the defense and they're get, getting it done too. Um, but I like the the Hornets to handle business at home. The Hawks also dealing with some some injuries. You know, we got Clint Capella on uh, minutes restriction. Yeah. Um, against the the Heat uh, earlier in the week, um, and they got a couple other their, their shooters out or it could be returned. It's just they're they're doing they're a little banged. Yeah, I, I would lay three there. That's the highest total game on the board. That's it, uh, and we're talking about that. It was two thirty six. Uh, no, I think no, the Nets Heels game pretty high too. Wow, there's some high total games. I mean, two thirty six is a that's a big. It's a big. Uh, Jay, our buddy Jay Harden's gonna have to have a big game there if that one's gonna go over. Um, there are, I'll be honest, there, there actually are some interesting games tonight, and I'm not gonna be watching it because hopefully I'll be, you know, locked into the second half of this Chiefs Bills game. But Jazz Warriors late night, um, 8 30. Maybe I'll catch the second half of that game after the Bills Chiefs game's over. Jazz Warriors has the makings of one of those NBA Western Conference final preview. Kind <sighs> the Warriors of gotta figure something out. The Warriors have been sliding to late, huh? Yeah, they're not. Uh, they're not looking. Not looking too. Twenty good. and four at home, though. I mean, you know, they're coming off of some I, tough. They're coming off some tough games. That game against the Tools was weird. I know. Against the um, Pacers was. Yeah, the Pacers terrible. game was terrible. weird. They, they got blown out by the Raptors a little bit ago too. So they've had some weird games. But listen, this is still a team that um, is, I, I would say, is right up there in the upper echelon. There are some very fascinating um, Western Conference teams. The East isn't really that exciting to me, which is normal. Who's who's piquing your interest in the West? I mean, I I still like the Warriors a lot. <laughs> uh, I I, the Suns you know, I just I, I feel yeah. I mean, you know, they were in the finals last year, so I, I can't really discount them. But I I feel like the Grizzlies and the Warriors are the two teams I'm looking at right now that I think have the most you know upside because of just the the, the youth uh, on on Memphis that's still kind of improving, and then for Golden State, I think people forget like clay thompson like let's give him some time to kind of get get back into the mix and i, I think that they're that still missing draymond really draymond big. also has, i mean that's a big part of what they, they need yeah 100 they, they, they they're gonna need him back in the playoffs draymond can miss the rest of the regular season as long as he's back for the playoffs that's big but i uh, you know we're, we're kind of getting to that time where the nba is going to uh you know start to take center stage you know give it another couple weeks until you know nfl's over and then you know we'll get a lot more weeknight big time ticket national headline games and then get into April and May once the playoffs start. So we'll start to really start pay attention to the NBA pretty soon. Don't worry, yeah. NBA fans. It's coming. All right, well, let's give the people what they want. Let's bring in Andrew Ortberg as we talk about these divisional games that are going on today. It was a crazy day yesterday. Probably going to be a crazy day again today. Um, if there is there a pick – like, what would be the craziest pick? Is there, like, an alt spread – uh, an alt total like that you're, that you're looking at they could just be total magical magical madness but you could see maybe happening today because i mean just it's just it's just been crazy today what's up guys how you guys doing hey yo, what up bud hey yo, i mean listen is there is there any kind like you you're on the unders well spoiler alert i mean what what, what is the lowest you could see today's games going because i mean we have three like nothing 35, yeah I guess. <laughs> there's no, nothing low enough man look at last night 13 10 i mean 13 you know? yeah it doesn't get much lower than that First, wait, can we get a Ryan Tannehill take out of you first? Because I know he's been a hot button topic for you this year. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I was happy to see it yesterday. I was on the <laughs> um, Bengals money line. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it on my Twitter. I won a lot of money on the yeah. Bengals uh, AFC North uh, division future. So now we've we've rolled it over. We've bet on the Bengals now. Me and the girl who won the 5K, we just bet on the Bengals against the Raiders. Yeah. Bet, on them, bet on them yesterday. You might as well bet on the AFC championship. Not because, like, Nothing I would recommend, like, oh, you got to, like, take the Bengals. Like, oh, I'm seriously betting the Bengals, but it's just for fun now, and I'm just going to keep riding them until the wheels fall off. What you do? Man, oh, man. Yeah, what's your big takeaway from, from yesterday? Is your I mean, obviously, you were on the Bengals, so you were – Yeah, I was on the Packers, too, though. I mean, pff, rough. Brutal. The, yeah, the buck punt was pretty rough. But, hey, brutal. you win some, you lose some. That's that was right. a wild game. Can, like I, I, I like that was one of those games where I think we'll look back at the playoffs, you know, in a few months when we do like a reflection, and we'll be like, how did that? And and I think the Titans too, both won seeds on the same day on buzzer beating field goals. Like, do we need to question the importance of the buy and how we were pumping up the buy all week? Packers getting healthy, Titans getting healthy. Is the buy overrated? Yeah, I think so. 
I think um, I, it probably depends on the team too. I think it can certainly be a disadvantage just as much as it can be advantage. Like, well, you know what? Aaron, rust is real. Because Aaron Rodgers kind of said something similar. He's like, no, we're rolling. We need to keep going. Like going into that last week when you're talking about maybe sitting him. He's like, no, we need to keep going. We need to keep playing. Yeah. We need to keep our foot on the gas. So, yeah. And even though they rough. played them, you know, that week 18 game was against the Lions. Like, even though they played them, like it didn't really feel like it was a real game. The Bengals had everyone too in week 18, though. So it's like, it, it, it's so it's so weird because it's we true. talk about these like narratives. But then they didn't look great last week against the, against the Raiders. They did not. You know? So yeah, it's like maybe that was not. just their kind of their warm up. <laughs> It's it's I think it's really hard to I think the hardest thing to do what in our position every week is to find the narrative that actually matters the most. There's a million narratives every week that you can go to. Aaron Rodgers can't beat the Niners, but the Niners don't have this guy playing. You know, like but it, it's it's I think that's the most difficult thing. There's always that one narrative. You, you Yesterday it was special it. teams for the for the Packers. And it was Ryan Tannehill for the Titans. Those are the two. You didn't Aaron worry Rodgers. about your Derrick Henry under when you saw him walking down the steps pregame. You didn't. I like, did. Some... I didn't. Although I was worried about it yesterday when Diana Rossini tweeted out that they were going to give him a full workload. He wasn't even ready for like a partial workload. He looked yeah. Yeah. slow and sluggish, and of course he did. He hasn't played in three months, and he's getting knocked around by guys that have been playing every week. I, I, I think it's all about fading the noise. Like question, anytime question I hear for these you guys parents, before we move on here. Does yesterday change how you perceive Aaron Rodgers? Because I feel like we put him on this in the same category as a Tom Brady, as a winner. As, and when you look at him, numbers aren't that great uh, in the postseason. I, I don't know. Does that change kind of your your the mystique around Aaron Rodgers? Great regular season player, going to be it the makes MVP. Me respect this year. Eli Manning a lot more. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> I mean, AO doesn't agree with that one. No, no, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't take too much away from Rodgers because last night, I mean, last night it's definitely partially on him for sure. Yeah, I don't think he should be blameless. Like, I mean, the offense did absolutely nothing after that opening drive, but I don't know. I'm not overreacting too much. We'll see what happens this offseason, though. It should be yeah, fun. We'll see. Now it does see make you respect guys like Eli Manning that raised their game in the playoffs compared mm -hmm. to some other quarterbacks that tend to regress. Like mm -hmm. that's that's my takeaway. Anytime I see a guy like Tannehill do what he did. Well, speaking of a guy like Tannehill, we've got Matt Stafford today <laughs> <laughs> in Tampa Bay taking on the Bucks. Uh, now that line is up to three, or yes, well it's been three. So uh, you're getting three points with the Rams, Jared. I know that you you've been on the Rams all week. Actually, yeah. I'm seeing some two and a halfs now on the board yeah it came uh, down a little bit it, it's been trending slightly down how, how are you feeling about your position I, I feel good with the three i got money line at plus 135 um i, I again I, I think this is matchups and to me the matchup scream rams i think up front brady's gonna have problems we'll see what the status is of Werfs and jensen um those are the two guys are along the offensive line that um might play i think jensen will play i think Werfs won't if i had to pick right now um, but we won't know for probably about two, three hours or so. And I think when you look at this game um, on the defensive side for Tampa Bay, I, I think they're going to be a little bit thin in the secondary too. Murphy Bunting was limited in practice this week, officially questionable to play. I, I, we thought he was going to play last week and he didn't, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, but I do know this. I know the Rams offense is really humming right now, and I know Matthew Stafford's got really strong numbers against the Blitz. Todd Bowles uh, and the Bucks defense is the most blitzing D in the league. That's the matchup to watch for the Rams offense against the Bucks defense. I think Odell's going to have a good game. He's been trending up over the last few weeks, ton of targets, had a good game against the Cardinals, it, basically in one half because the second half the Rams didn't even need to throw the ball. And I, I think when you look at that game, um, you can really tell that Matthew Stafford looked comfortable. Beckham looked comfortable. I, I, think, I think Stafford's okay with – shading the coverage when it when the coverage says don't throw to Cooper Cup when they double him I think he's comfortable enough now with the other receivers on the field to go away from that and I, I just think the trenches say Rams the quarterback situation obviously says Bucks that I can't you know fade Brady uh you know and, and not give him his due but I, I just feel like the Rams have the better overall team one through 52 or 53 on the roster um and maybe the great equalizer is Brady but I, I think the trenches and, and the other matchups say Rams you mean Odell Beckham as a number two receiver could work? You know that that could be a good thing. Like a, a quarterback, a quarterback could like a quarterback could like that. 
I, I, I will wear it because I've said for the last like five years since the boat trip that a team that has Odell will never win the Super Bowl. But I, I'm changing my tune with this Rams team. I think that he's really settled in and accepted his role. Mm. Should have changed your tune after you saw his dad cut up that uh, that highlight tail. I mean, that's when you should have changed your yeah, tune. Right. It's not Odell. It's never Odell. Uh, Ayo, you're on the under here. We saw some unders come in yesterday. Uh, you think the trend continues? Why? Yeah, I think that 48 and a half. I mean, look, these teams obviously played in a pretty high scoring game back in like week three. A lot has changed since then. And in, in that week three game, it wasn't that high scoring. The first quarter was actually scoreless. The like, it, it, halftime it wasn't high school. It was looking like it was going to go under. And then there was like this third quarter explosion. You know, there was a couple of really quick touchdowns. Deshaun Jackson on like a blown coverage, like 75. But no, Clay McVay was running 70 yards down the field. So I don't think that game was played quite as well offensively as we may remember when we see 34-24 in the box score. And like uh, like Jared said, I think that the uh, I'm pretty pessimistic about the Bucks offense. If you look mm. at the and, and I think this, you know, that's why I lean Rams too. The last three games of the regular season, the Bucks get the Panthers, Jets, Panthers, then the first round of the playoffs to get the Eagles, who never should have been there at all. So they finished the seat since the Chris Godwin injury. Those are the only teams they've played is Panthers, Jets, Panthers, then Eagles, cakewalk, home playoff game against Jalen Hurts, making his first playoff star on the road it was never in doubt. The last time they really. Like, got challenged was the game they got shut out 9-0 by the saints yeah i mean that's the last time they played a tough defense they got shut out and uh and obviously they had got them for the start of that game so yeah i think that you know they've been able to hide a lot of their issues because they've been playing some really bad teams and bad quarterbacks now i think it's going to be a lot tougher against the rams defense that is playing really 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 well they just made kyler murray look absolutely in over his head and that was not shocking to me. I was on the under in the Rams-Cardinals game. The Rams defense was really trending up the second half of the season. As Jared alluded to, obviously the offensive line issues for the Bucks are a big thing. But I think the, yeah, the receiving issues, like, I mean, shoot, without Godwin and A.B., I think it's going to be a lot more noticeable here when you got Jalen Ramsey to take away Mike Evans, and then there's not a whole lot else after him. Obviously, Aaron Donald hopefully will say hello to Brady a couple of times. And on the flip side, yeah, the Rams offense, I mean, they looked good last week against the Cardinals. I think, the, I mean, the Cardinals' defense was trending down for sure. Cardinals' defense have been struggling in the second half of the year. I think Matt Stafford going on the road is going to be a much more dicey proposition in the playoffs. Obviously, I mean, it's like the Rams' offense. You never know what you're going to get. It looked pretty good against the Cardinals last week, but the Cardinals have been struggling, and the Rams got to play with confidence because of how bad the Cardinals' offense was playing. But mm -hmm. the week before that, I mean, Stafford melted down against the Niners, you know, took five sacks, threw some interceptions. So, that loss ain't looking so bad now, though, after, that's after true. what just happened that's, last that's night. Very true. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, in the Bucks, shoot, I mean, the Bucks have also kind of trended up on defense lately. I mean, they sure. dominated the Eagles. So I, I think that this one I, should be relatively low scoring. I like the under as well. I think it's a little high, um, mostly because of the way these offensive lines are going to be kind of having to – do some patchwork, yeah. right? We got Andrew Whitworth out that's with a knee injury for the Rams. I mean, that's a big blow. That's their left tackle. So, I mean, the way that the Bucks D line is, I mean, everyone going into this game is talking about the Rams D line, rightfully so. But the Bucks D, D line ain't nothing to sneeze at either. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm, and, and then obviously we talked on you know Jensen and and Worse and you know how valuable they are. Even if they're out there, how effective will they be? I don't Worse know, especially when you got to go again. You're going to need to be 100%, and I doubt they will be when you got Von Miller, Aaron Donald, and those other dudes. You know, that's, that's just a really strong defensive line. So I, I think Brady's going to be in for a long day. And like you said, AO, this is going to be the game where the absence of Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown, that this really shows up. Um, I think Brady, to get it done today, it's going to be a lot of dink and dunks. Uh, slow the game down. A lot of yeah. short plays. It's not going to be a lot of big explosive plays from the from the Bucks. I don't think because I don't I think. I, I mean, like you said, Ramsey's going to be locking up Mike Evans. That's going to be a great matchup. Um, I'll give you some props that that feed. Yeah, I was going to say. I was going to say we, we we we're talking about Mike Evans here. Um, you know, Brady's going to have to look elsewhere. And Jared, you're on another Bucks receiver or pass catcher, I should say, uh, and his his yards. Uh, props. So why don't you get that out? Yeah, there, there's a few props that I'd say feed some narratives that I like in this game. So first of all, the Brady completions prop, a um, lot of short, quick stuff today from him, sure. which which to me means over 26 and a half. 
Uh, he went over that last week against the Eagles, and that was not a game script where the Bucks really should have been throwing it that much. I know they didn't have – They want the ball in Brady's game. hands today. That's 100%. Absolutely. But I think Brady wants it out of his hands quick because he knows uh, the, the heat is coming. To that end, I actually think the Gronk under – is a better play in my eyes. I because I, I could see listen, Gronk is 6'6, 270. I could see Gronk being more of a chipper today. Uh, you know, uh, knocking, you know, Miller and Donald and Floyd at the line of scrimmage and then going out for those little flat routes and then maybe getting some dink and dunk. Maybe the receptions prop for Gronk isn't over, but I think the yards at 64 and a half is an under because I just don't see him running a lot of seam routes down the field. I think I could see him more in kind of an in-line role today, staying at the line of scrimmage, especially if Fournette's back and they're trying to run the ball and take a little bit of that heat off the pass rush. So, uh, I again, I'm not the most gifted prop better. It's not my cup of tea. There's some much more talented prop betters out there, like prop bet guy, who, by the way, is on uh, the Brady completions over. But I think the Gronk under, um, the receiving yards under, is kind of my lean there. And um, the OBJ over, which I gave out a little uh, while ago, and those are the, I'm playing three props in this game. Uh, to go Brady with your Gronk. over. Yeah, I know. And I was go- on him in the last week of the season for the, you know, contract incentives. But I, well, think I was just going to say, to go along with that, we also have uh, receptions at five and a half. It's juiced to the over. Uh, I, you that would that be an well, over. Just kind of like it's a safety blanket for five and a half. I can yeah, see that. it's really heavily juiced, though. Yeah. But yeah, I think Brady's completions for sure. He's going to have a lot. The quick passing game, I think, will be a factor today. Ayo, you got any props or are you? You know, I haven't really dove in yet. I don't for this game. I don't hate the Higby over. I bet that a few times recently. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't hate right, it. Let's, let's move on to the big one. This this one's going to take some time to break down. Yeah, this is the varsity right here. Chiefs, Bills. Uh, the Bills catching one and a half on the road today. Josh Allen and the that Bills offense. I think. I don't even think – I think the stat I saw, they haven't punted in three of their last four games. Just insane. I mean, they're humming right now. Um, I'm just going to start this off. I like the Bills. Um, I think the narrative around this Chiefs team has been that they figured out their turnover issues, right, um, and that their defense has figured it out. But if you looked at the quarterbacks that they have played, when they have figured out or their non-conference quarterbacks that they face since they figured it out after starting the season really slow. Uh, it's been Daniel Jones. It has been Jordan Loves. Remember, Aaron Rodgers did not play in that game. Dak Prescott, who was without Amari Cooper and lost CeeDee Lamb in the first half of that game. And then you got Ben Roethlisberger, Joe Burrow. They lost that game. And then Ben Roethlisberger again in the wild card round. This is just not necessarily – uh, not necessarily the, the best bunch of quarterbacks to face. And Josh Allen, I think, is just on a completely different level. I could see this one turning into maybe a little bit of a shootout because I think the Bills are built to, to hang. One of the few teams that are built to hang with the Chiefs in a shootout, but that 54, a little high for me. So I'm just going to take the points and uh, and roll with the Bills in this one. I gave it out earlier in the week at two, but one and a half. It's mm-hmm. one now on DraftKings. Well, it's one? I would be shocked if this is a pick them at game time. Pick them? That's when – that's when I'd step in on the Chiefs, I think. Um, pick them? Yeah, I think at a minus 110 on both sides, I, I think I would probably step in on the Chiefs in that spot. I, I think um, I think when you look at this game big picture, you, you, you try to you know ignore. I'm going to try my best to ignore the stats and the, the numbers from the first matchup because I think both teams are oh, very yeah, different. For sure. um, I think there's one thing that is the same, and that's Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes' legs in my eyes, become more of a factor in the playoffs. And I think a strategy that – and we're going to do a live halftime. You know, We're, we're going to start doing some live halftime shows coming up next weekend, but I'm going to look at the halftime rushing yards prop for both of those guys, um, which one is behind at half. And I'm going to look at the live over for that quarterback. Um, I think the live props are intriguing based off game script. Um, and there's got to be an over game this weekend, right? We've had two unders yesterday. We all think the first game is going to stay under. Th- this game has to go over, right? Nobody's stopping anybody in this game, right, Andrew? Like, I, I don't understand how any Bills has the best you know, defense. I mean, they got the top defense. I know, but are they going to miss Jadavious White today? That's the question. That's they play great. that five shell. You know, McDermott likes to play that, you know, you know, five nickel secondary where he's kind of, you know, rolling the coverages over with the zone and, and – it, you know, is Mahomes who's been dealing with that all year because teams love to make him dink and dunk. 
Are they going to have some kind of scheme for that today? And are we going to be finally today for the first time? Man, the Bills really missed Tredavious White. They haven't missed him in the last month since he's gotten hurt. Um, granted, they faced the quarterbacks, Cam Newton, Matt Ryan, Zach Wilson, Mac Jones times two in that stretch. So today they're finally going to face a guy that's going to stretch the field. So I think there's going to be points in this game. I'm talking I about the rushing props for the quarterbacks. You, do you like either of them? You got Mahomes at 24 and a half. Josh Allen, it's gone up. It was under 50. Now it's 51 and a half, I believe. I, no, because I think they'll go down in the first half. Because I think in this, I think the, I think one of them will go down. The, the, the team that's behind at halftime, you will get a better number on that quarterback in the second half. I'm, I'm confident of that. I like that. Hey, what's your feel for this game? Tell me you're on the under. Tell me it's just going to be an under sweep for the weekend. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I lean towards the under. You know, it's no, let's go. <laughs> Come on. It's, I have to do it, you know. i gotta play. <laughs> got to play the hits, people. They've come to expect a certain Greatest thing. hits. I love it. I mean, look, we got 54. First time they played, there were 58 total points, so not that many more. I think a lot has changed since then in favor of the defenses. Obviously, the Bills' defense is playing great. But, I mean, when they played in Week 5 and the Bills kind of shredded the Chiefs, the Chiefs were like at their crescendo of their uh, defensive incompetence. You know, there was that stretch where everyone was talking about the Chiefs have a historically poor defense. You know, all this. They, they gave up at least 29 points in each of their first five games. It's pretty unprecedented. Ever since then, they've kind of turned it around. You know, they've given up uh, 17 or fewer now in seven of their last 10. Steve Spagnuolo really got things turned around. Chris Jones did not play for the Chiefs in that first Bills game. Shavarius Ward, starting every single down, every single snap cornerback, did not play in that game against the Bills either. So those are two huge getbacks on defense. And the Chiefs defense just finished the year playing much, much better overall. And I'm just not sold on the Chiefs offense still. I'm just still being quite back. You know, it's like – they. They've turned it on when they've played kind of average to below average defenses recently. I mean, you look who they finished the year against. You know, obviously they got the Steelers, and the Steelers are another story in the playoffs. And then they finished the regular season. You know, the Bengals, Steelers, Chargers, Raiders, defenses have really struggled lately. The only times that they didn't down the stretch, you know, in week 18, they played the Broncos. The scoreboard looks decent, but the offense really struggled in that game. The homes averaged 6.1 yards per attempt when they had to play the Broncos in Denver in week 18. I mean, they beat up on the Raiders. It's like the only other tough defense they played recently was the Broncos again in their first meeting with the Broncos. And the offense again struggled. They only put up 22 points, you know. Week before that, then they had 19 against Dallas and they torched the Raiders. And so it's like they've torched the teams that they can torch, like the Chargers and the Raiders and the Steelers. But when they played teams like the Broncos and the Cowboys, even the Packers or the Giants, teams with better defenses, I mean, the offense has really struggled still recently. And the Bills obviously play as well on defense as just about anybody. So I'm just I'm a little skeptical of this recent like Chiefs offensive resurgence when we see them hanging 40 on the Steelers and everyone's like oh Mahomes is back he's like nothing happened something still feels a little bit off to me but this offense it doesn't feel like they have the same ceiling that they had last year or at the year before ever in Mahomes era to me it doesn't feel like it. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. We got a comment in the chat. I want to throw out there. To yeah. You what are the, what's the chat saying today? I, well, the I chat wants to know. They want to ask. They got specific players they're asking about. But this one's actually interesting to me. Yeah, Aaron throw, Donald yeah, throw it out a sack it. minus one hundred two. Sure. Why not? I mean, those. Are, I I haven't capped that, but the the handicap said like the overall He's handicap cute. says yes. But I don't know how many sacks he has in the last few few weeks. <sighs> I mean, but if let's just leave it at this. If he's rushing up the middle, we were talking Brady, about Jensen not being, yeah. That's exactly. You know, J Jensen looked awful. Worfs and Jensen looked really. Wait, bad. does he get? If we, I've, I never bet sack props. Yeah, does I mean, a half stack count much. as a sack? I think it's got to be. A full. I think it's a full I, sack. I think it's a full sack. sack. So I guess two halves will count. count. Or is it over under 0. 0.5 sacks and you push if you get a half sack? Maybe. Check your house rules on that, but I'll say the handicap favors that. Because Brady hates pressure up the middle. And I again, you know, maybe Jensen and you know, they they missed, you know, the the million dollar man put like a bionic ankle on him you know, over the weekend, but I, I just I can't see him being healthy after what I saw last week. You know, though th that's a big ankle that needs to heal. And same thing with Worfs. Like Worfs's like legs are like the size of tree trunks. Like that's a lot of muscle that needs to heal in a short period of time. I cannot see these guys being hundred percent healthy. So I think the offensive line for um, the the Bucks is going to be in up against it today. But that being said, the scheme, if I'm Brady, quick passing game, get it out quick. So I trust Brady to kind of counteract whatever the, the Rams are going to try to do at him. 
And that's that's why I like the completions prop a lot. We got another comment here. OBJ first touchdown. I don't know about first touchdown, but we had uh, Gilles Gallant on earlier in the week, and OBJ was one of his favorite anytime play yeah. play uh, touchdowns. Jill had a tough day yesterday with a special teams touchdown and all the other stuff. It was a touch tough day to bet touchdown props yesterday. <laughs> I mean, it's, you got to you got to bounce back eventually, yeah, right? I, and OBJ, I think what he does about earlier for plus sure. one eighty five for any time. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's a good bet at plus 185 for the anytime. Yeah, What's fan, the first? I like, that on 10 to 10 to 10 to 10 yeah, I mean, they've been using him in the red zone a ton. I mean, they 100%. threw that fade to him last week. Absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, let me see if we got anything else in here that's that's good. Stafford protects the ball. They can hang. Sure. Justin clarified, by the way, Fandle records it as uh, – phrases it as to record a sack. And, again, that's tricky. That's yeah. tricky. I, I, I to have me, to that means a so they don't so they don't word it they word it because there's a few times this season where we finished with a half sack like i'd yeah. have to see some clarity on that if a half I, sack I wouldn't counts, bet that. shoot i'm all in on I minus one or two even if it doesn't count i was just looking at it donald donald he had look he had at least one full sack in one two three four five six seven eight nine games during the regular season he had at least wow. one full so sack then there was some, yeah and there's a couple more where he had a half and yeah in a game like this offensive line injuries I mean, obviously Brady's pretty good again. The ball, boy, but I, there are worse things you could bet. I need Fanduel to find a sack. Is it ha- like I need a definition? Would be great. I, I, would, I would lean to the side of one. one, but also if if we we do this for a living every day, and if we're this uncertain about it, there's probably yeah. better bets to make today. I think. Than, we have uh, to think one of the stack props because they're inherently kind of fluky. You know, I mean, Very there's, fluky. there's a, Donald could have a great game. But if Brady agree. gets 100%. the ball out as he's getting hit, pressures. yeah, yeah, and right. he or but you, you can get a or just throw, just throw away. Too. There are those yeah, sacks and, too, and where the quarterback like slides too. a yard behind the line of scrimmage, and they have to give somebody the sack yeah. who's the nearest to him. Like, here's what I, I was looking play. at the sacks. I was looking at the sack props in the cont- in contract incentive week, and the reason that I laid off all of them was because there you can't scheme a sack. Like you can't be like, yeah. all right, you're the receiver. I'm going to throw you the ball at this spot. You know the sat. You're right. It is really fluky. So maybe not enough. If if it's a minus number, I think it was minus one or two. Yeah. If you want something, you can make better Like you can always you can always look back and say, yeah, I, should, I wish I did this. Yeah, of course, how hindsight's get, always twenty twenty. How did we not do this show yesterday and look at Ryan Tannehill and Jimmy exactly. Garoppolo interceptions? How did oh, we not look at that. that? How did we not look at? I mean, that was. Wait, come on. We could have both given that out. Like, without even. Well, the sack props yesterday, not the player sack, but just the total team sacks yesterday was like the easiest I mean, I mean, bet on yeah. the board. <laughs> uh, so I'm bringing this up to say Matt Stafford to throw an interception at minus 128. No. No. It's too min- I, minus. Money. Uh, minus minus like eight isn't it? Is. It's not enticing. That's not plus, enticing. It, like, the, like, those props I like when they're plus money. You know, well, and like I think a there was a few times like this year. Five. Well, what about the Mahomes one? I'm sure that's in plus money. He hasn't even thrown a pick in you know like what? a million that is straight plus games. Money. That is plus that's money. The one, that's the one that I would bet today. That's the one I'd bet today. Mahomes interception plus 106. That's the one I would bet today. I like I Minus like 128. One. There are so many other – like throwing an interception, it, it's like one moment in the game. I, I think I would rather bet a plus money in that spot, you know? Mm-hmm. We got a roughing the passer prop, touch Brady, automatic flag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, by the way, we're, we will talk about it. Don't worry. When we get to Super Bowl week, penalties props are a thing. They mm-hmm. are a thing, and we will be betting them. I will be handicapping the refs Super Bowl week almost as much as the game itself. Don't you worry, people. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see what the – I, I want to say the officiating crew – I game. didn't look today. I, I it's too it's still too early. We'll wait. We'll do it Super Bowl week when they hype it up and they make it like these guys are like the best refs ever. No, no, no. These are guys. Um, it's hockey league crew, I believe. Oh God, I thought the refs me. yesterday weren't terrible. I I didn't like there weren't any calls yesterday where I was like, eh. I think the interception could have gone either way on the Titans, right? The one that almost hit the ground. That was like a mm-hmm. that was a stand. That could have gone either way. Oh. And it surely is. We get it's Sean Hockley. Sean Hockley. Mm. He's yes, doing the sir. Brady game. 
He's doing the Brady game. Yeah, so that means be rough. don't there's touch be Brady. Rough. Yeah, there's gonna be a rough do not touch that. Brady today. Yeah, and we're gonna Sean Hockley over under fifty times on my screen. Just Hockley yeah. loves he, he, he loves him loves and his dad. Him. him and his dad, they love the screen time. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's uh let's get out of here with our plays of the day, Jerry. We got a three star play on the website. Oh, let me look. I haven't looked actually this morning. I apologize. Um, actually, one last thing I like for this Bills Chiefs yeah, game. Go ahead. Yeah, Gabriel yeah. Davis over third. It's like probably got, got like to that out. That's a family play. I'm on it too. I love that. Yeah, you know what's annoying is that I saw um a few days ago, a couple days ago. Like I never bet props that early in the week, but I was looking and I saw that Gabriel Davis was like I think it was like thirty and a half early in the week, and I. It was like, oh, that jumps out to me, but I didn't bet it. But uh, still, like now, 37 and a half. I mean, he, he's gone over this number in each of his last five games and really has taken on a bigger role down the stretch. I mean, when Emmanuel Sanders got hurt for a while, he stepped up and kind of, I don't think, has relinquished that role. And he, he could have even had some bigger weeks. Like last week of the regular season, he had 14 targets against the Jets. So I think obviously the Chiefs' defensive game plan is going to center around slowing around Diggs. Davis has been coming on strong. Allen clearly trusts him. So I think that uh, Davis is pretty well set up today. I'll mention one more name, actually, because I noticed him getting a lot more snaps in the slot last week over Cole Beasley. Isaiah McKenzie um, has been coming on very strong of late for the Bills. Uh, and, yeah, very shifty. And I think that was the one thing that I noticed last week. Granted, the, the, the game like the game got weird late, so I don't know if I want to read too much into uh, snap counts, but I did notice him in the slot a lot more than wiggle. I noticed Cole wiggle. Beasley. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a guy I'd look to, too, if you want to have, like, a fun flyer on a first touchdown, Isaiah McKenzie. Um, I'm sure that whopping him. And he is, like, he's the Swiss Army knife. You know, he can kind of do a little of everything. Uh, and speaking of touchdowns, I do have a three-star for you. Uh, and I'll give a shout to, to our boy Ricky Diamond. Does a great job editing the site. Tremendous uh, work with him every week. Uh, he's on Travis Kelsey to score a touchdown tonight anytime at plus 105. Go read about it on the site. Pixwise.com, the app, all that fun stuff. But our boy Ricky Diamond, one of the editors, one of AO's boys, um, been out Kelsey tonight. Isaiah McKenzie plus 2,500 first touchdown. That's my sprinkle of the day right there. Lock that one in. Isaiah McKenzie, 25 to 1 first touchdown sprinkle. Why not? Let's come on. Let's go. And four plus 450 for any time. That's nice, too. I think I might bet both of those. <laughs> uh, Jared, what's your play? I'm going with the Rams. I got three minus 110. You probably lay 20 cents now and still get it. I still think that's fine. You want to take the money line and really be bold. No issues there. But my official three star play, it's on the it's on the app, it's on the site, it's on the column, it's everywhere. Been saying it from every show, screaming from every mountaintop this week. So when Brady, you know, wins by 20 and you know they're going back to the NFC championship game against Jimmy G, I'll look like a fool. But I still think the Rams matchup wise, if you throw Brady out. And you just look at the trenches and the secondary. And I, I just think that this game matchup wise really favors the Rams. I think they're going to go whoa. into Tampa and win a game. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. We got to take a time out here. How do we not talk about this? Because I just thought in the chat. Thank you. Thank you for throwing this in the chat. Who, who gave this out? Kevin. Josh Allen. Anytime touchdown. Plus 165. Yeah. Oh, I, I, mean, I bet that too. Hey, he I agree. saw 140. I, love that. I don't know where he saw 140. 165 is on FanDuel right now. I, I love that. Love me some JA. That I, I will be I will be betting the rushing props for Mahomes or Allen at halftime. Check Twitter which one, but I will be betting one of them. Uh, I like the Bills today. I gave out two points earlier in the week. Can't find two points anymore. You know what? I like Bills money line. Bills money lines can be my play. Forget what this graphic says. Bill money line. Bills money lines. To, uh, my play today. Better defense. Better quarterback. Am I allowed to say that? Better quarterback. Better offense. I think the offense is rolling right now. So I'm not saying in front of the Bills chain. So I'm going with Bills Mafia today. All in. Bills money line. Cool. Give me the give me the Rams Bucks under. Come on. All right. Forty eight point five. Like we said, Rams defense has been playing really well lately. Obviously, just completely shut down Kyler Murray. Thirty four to eleven. The only reason that game came close to going over the Rams Cardinals is because they got that defensive touchdown on Murray. I don't think Brady's going to throw a pick six, but I do think he's going to struggle a bit here. I mean, again, like we said, look at these Bucks last games. The games without God would have been Panthers, Jets, Panthers, Eagles. They didn't really need him. They're going to need him here. It's going to be a lot more evident here when Jalen Ramsey is taking away Mike Evans and Brady's got nobody else to throw to. And Matt Stafford on the road in a playoff environment, in a hostile environment, sounds like a recipe for disaster to me. Played pretty well against the Cardinals last week. Really struggled a few weeks before that. So we'll see. 
I think let's 40 and a half is a bit high. Let's just, no, hope we're, some, let's just hope for some great games today. I mean, yesterday, were, they, were yesterday's games great, or were they just like intriguing? Yesterday's like, games, I, I, we, again, we look at it through the prism of losing bets. I thought yesterday's games were tremendous uh, entertainment and drama. Oh, I, definitely I really drama. Do. Definitely they had drama. I, I really do, and I know that we were on the Titans and we wanted Tannehill not to play like he had a, you know, like an, a gremlin in his ear telling him to throw these ridiculous passes. But uh, that game was really exciting. Joe Burrow really, you know, showed you that he is as tough. I mean, got sacked nine times. He is as tough as it comes. And then in the second game, Lambeau Field, swirling snow, you know, special teams blocked punt for a touchdown. How often do you see that in a playoff game? I mean, they were really good games, all settled at the last. After blocking moment. a field goal at, to, before yeah, the Yeah, like <laughs> at the last, they were both won at the buzzer, and they both had the chance to go into overtime if the kicks went the other way. I thought yesterday's games were muh, peak NFL drama and volatility. We were on the wrong side of some results, but we have to take remove our bias. I think yesterday's games were very good. In the words of Aaron Rodgers, how can you not be a romantic about football? It's true. With that, we'll get out of here. Good luck with your bets today. We will be back tomorrow morning, 10 a.m.